Hello, and welcome to this episode of Hobby Science. My name is Brent. Today, we are talking about plastic glue. What's in the bottle, and what does it do? Plastic glue, or plastic cement, is the stuff sold to stick model kits together. Model trains, planes, ships, tanks, cars, they're all pretty much made out of a single plastic called polystyrene. Polystyrene is durable, it can be injection molded, it holds detail well, it can be cut, it can be sanded, etc, etc. It's a great plastic for models, and that's why all the big model companies use it. These companies also sell glues specifically designed to work with polystyrene models. These glues are designed to be dripped or brushed into a joint, the pieces are pressed together, and when it's all dry, the union is incredibly strong. At the molecular level, Polystyrene plastic is a tangle of long chains of the polymer. The glue is an organic solvent which can solvate these chains. Dissolved polymer chains from the two pieces of plastic intermingle, and when the solvent dries, we're left with a single piece of plastic. So, chemically speaking, what is plastic glue? A good way to find this type of information is to look up the material safety data sheets, MSDS or SDS for short. These will list potentially hazardous materials in a product, along with rough percentages. These sheets can be a little bit coy for trade secret reasons, and they aren't required to report chemicals with no known hazards, but they do tend to be a good starting point. For plastic glues especially, most of the ingredients are highly flammable, and so most of them are listed. We can find that Revel Contacta Professional is mostly N-butyl acetate, Citadel plastic glue is also mostly N-butyl acetate. Tamiya extra thin cement is N-butyl acetate and acetone. Tester's liquid cement is methyl ethyl ketone, ethyl acetate, and 1-methoxy 2-propyl acetate. This one is N-butyl acetate, xylenes, ethyl benzene, and polystyrene. This one is toluene and polystyrene. This one is D-limonene and polystyrene. The last three in the list were gels, and the polystyrene was added as a thickener. So this is actually a pretty wide variety of molecules. All of the glues work in the same basic way, but some of them have no overlap at all in their ingredients. What all these molecules have in common, though, is that they are all organic solvents. These are liquids with a carbon backbone. Most of them are insoluble in water, and all of them can dissolve materials which water cannot dissolve. Solubility is guided by the axiom of like dissolves like. Toluene, xylenes, and ethylbenzene are all structurally similar to polystyrene, which helps them dissolve it. The other molecules on this list, the terpene, the ketones, and the esters, are all strong, versatile organic solvents, which can also dissolve polystyrene. Another point is that none of these chemicals is particularly rare or expensive. Consumers can find most of these in the paint section of the hardware store. These solvents are useful when working with paint, varnishes, and other coatings that contain polymers which are not water-soluble. Here are some of the offerings from the Clean Strip brand. At least five of these are compounds found in plastic glue. Methyl ethyl ketone, methyl ethyl ketone substitute, which is actually ethyl acetate, acetone, Xylene, sometimes called xylenes, because it's a mixture of ortho, meta, and para-xylene, and toluene. I was able to find all of these except the toluene in my local hardware store. Here's a little experiment that shows these solvents dissolving polystyrene model sprues. The first four solvents are specifically listed in various plastic glues, while the paint thinner and the mineral spirits were just solvents I happen to have, and they fit into the frame, so why not? One observation here is that the paint thinner and the mineral spirits are not particularly destructive to the plastic. That's good news if you like to paint your bottles with oil-based paints. The acetone partially dissolves the sprue, whereas methyl ethyl ketone, ethyl acetate, and xylenes completely dissolve it. I kept going and added more sprues to these three, but I actually ran out of blue sprues and space in the vials before I reached a gel consistency. Remember, some plastic glues are listed as containing 25-50% to 50 polystyrene by weight, so I wanted to see if I could achieve something similar myself. I switched to smaller amounts of solvent and gray sprues, of which I had plenty, and ran the experiment again. 
Look at them go. As a side note, many of these exact solvents are used in spray paints. So if you've ever ruined a model with poor rattle can technique, maybe this experiment helps you understand that experience a little bit better. Okay, so I have achieved a gel. As a quick check, if we let the solvent evaporate, yep, we get polystyrene back out. Now let's see if I was successful in making a plastic cement gel. I applied a little bit to some gold sprue. And yep, it works. So methyl ethyl ketone, ethyl acetate, and xylenes all clearly dissolve polystyrene very efficiently, and they're all components of plastic glue, so I decided to see if they could work as thin plastic glue all on their own. I grabbed some nail polish bottles, loaded them up, and decided to try to make some plastic stick figures. And as we find out, it works pretty well, actually. All three of them work pretty well. So when it comes down to it, what plastic glue should you buy? This is a pretty interesting question. Polystyrene itself is essentially the same between all the model brands. The glues, though, they have a wide range of chemical ingredients between the different brands. They have different viscosities, different evaporation rates, and different odors. Some of the chemicals have more health hazards than others. You can Google the SDS sheets if you're interested. I'm not going to give anyone any medical advice, but in the quantities that I use, I'm personally not too worried about my plastic glue and my health. For me, a bigger consideration picking a glue is the packaging and the applicator that the glue comes with. I find that the brushes and the needle applicators are really handy. I absolutely hate tested gel tubes, though. The reason my Tamiya Extra Thin Glue appeared in this video is because I love the little brush that comes with it. So again, none of these solvents is rare or expensive, and they all work to dissolve polystyrene. They all work with polystyrene models. Don't give in to the marketing hype. You don't need to buy testers glue for testers models. You don't need to buy Games Workshop glue for Games Workshop models. Really, it just comes down to personal preference. Heck, you can... Just use one of these jugs of solvent from the hardware store if you want. Just grab something that's convenient for you and build some models. There you have it. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new about plastic glue, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And then come back again soon for some more hobby science.